Welcome to another Doodly Pro tutorial. This time, we're going to be taking a look at how to model a lightsaber inside of 3D Studio Max. We're also going to be able to animate the lightsaber on and off, and we're going to make that awesome glow effect that you see right here. But first, let's take a look at the test animation. Wow, that was amazing. So let's take a look at the slow motion. As you can see, the character's lightsabers come out in the beginning. There's definitely light interacting with the background of the scene. And there's light reflecting off their bodies and faces. So that's pretty sweet. Alright, let's get started modeling this thing by hopping over to 3D Studio Max. Shabam! Movie magic! So here we are back in 3D Studio Max. And I want to help you guys set a few things up first. It'll make the tutorial a little easier to follow. First off... If we go up to Customize, Unit Setup, I'm working in Generic Units today. Now the second thing is, if you're in version 2011 or higher, your Material Editor may look something like this. Now, this is called the Slate View, which is nothing wrong with the Slate Editor. If you're more comfortable using it, by all means. But I'm going to be using the Compact Editor today, which looks a little something like this. So if you want to switch it to match mine, you can go ahead and click on Modes and select Compact Material Editor. So, enough with the introductions, let's make ourselves a lightsaber. I'm going to first select my perspective viewport and maximize. So what we want to do is make sure we're in the Create tab, have Geometry selected, make sure we're on Standard Primitives, select our cylinder. And we're just going to drag this guy out and click him. If you're not getting these lines, it looks something like this. Go ahead and press F4 on your keyboard. Let's set up our parameters. For our radius, we want to do 12. Height, we're going to do 70. Height segments, keep that on 2. Cap segments, set to 2 as well. It's these guys up here. And then we're going to make sure our sides are set to 16. Perfect. We're going to right click on it, go down to Convert to, and select Edible Poly. That's going to move us over to the Modify tab. And we want to select Polygons. Now what we're going to do is select every other mother here. And of course, hold down control on your keyboard so you can select more than one polygon. Next, we're going to scroll down here and find extrude. We're going to extrude by two. That looks good. And press OK. Now what we're going to do is move up and select our scale tool. And scale down. So it looks something like that. It looks pretty good. And we're also going to go back to our move tool and move it up so that it's flush against the top. That's pretty good. Now, we're going to scroll back up here and find the button that says grow. What we're going to do with this is go back down and find extrude again. Hit the box. And instead of doing group this time, we're going to select by polygon. And that'll make it look something like this. That's exactly what we want. Except this time, instead of doing it by two, we're going to do one. Okay. Looking good, if I do say so myself. And I do. Looking good so far, now that we have our little design here at the bottom. Alright, now we're going to move to the top. What I'm going to do is click and drag so I select everything that you see here. And then I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and click and drag on this bottom part. So that'll deselect whatever was on the bottom, leaving just the top. And what I'm going to do with that is use the move tool to bring it down to about here. That looks good. Now get ready. We're going to go find the extrude checkbox and we're going to do a couple crazy extrusions all at once. So be sure to keep a close ear out for what we're about to do next. The first thing is we don't want by polygon to be selected anymore. We want to change the extrusion type to group. Now the first extrusion we're going to make is 3. Not 30, 3. So once we have that, instead of pressing OK, we're going to hit apply. What that will do is it will let us keep extruding more than once. So the first one we did was 3. The next one we're doing is 15. We're going to hit apply. Then 3. Again. Hit apply. Then here's a big one, 30, hit apply, move down so we can see what we're doing here. We're going to do 5, hit apply, one more 3, 
apply five hit apply and on this last extrusion here we're going to hit ten but wait don't press apply we want to press ok because we're done making extrusions all right the next step is going to be to add a few more details what we're going to do is make sure polygon mode is selected still and click and drag so that we get this ring here and make sure you fly around your model here rotate it around make sure you only have that ring selected and then we're going to move down here hold control on our keyboard so we can select more than one and drag and select just this ring I'm going to check again everything looks good great the last step is to hold control again and select one line right in between what I'm going to do next scroll down here find extrude group is not what we're looking for right here and neither is polygon this time I mean you could make your lightsaber all spiky if you'd like but in this case we're going to select local normal we're going to bring this down to probably one one looks pretty good alright press ok and then we're going to select just these three polygons here but instead of hitting extrude we're going to select bevel this time We'll bring the height down to about one and keep the outline amount at negative zero so it looks something like this press ok now we're going to do the same basic thing up top here on this part of the lightsaber we're going to drag select make sure we get this ring and we're going to select the polygon right below it that is in line with the polygons we just beveled a little bit ago hit extrude and one looks good for these guys as well press ok alright and now we're gonna do one last extrusion let's select the top ring here make sure you don't get anything on top or underneath it just this very top ring we're gonna hit the extrude checkbox and now we're gonna extrude this one out by three press ok now we're gonna do something a little different we're gonna select all of this middle part right here Let's go ahead and click around. There should be 16 selected. If you look up at the very top, it'll show you how many polygons you have selected. It's so 16. That's right. Because if you remember, we made the cylinder with 16 sides in the beginning. Now we're going to go to our grow button and press it once. All right, your selection is going to look a little something like this. What we're going to do with this is hit the extrude checkbox, but we're not going to extrude upwards this time. We're actually going to extrude inwards to a negative number. So let's change this to negative 5. Negative 5 looks good. Press OK. Go back up here. And hit the shrink button just once. So we have again the 16 polygons we did before. Now what we're going to do is press bevel. Those settings look good, the ones that we used last time. Height at 1, outline amount at negative 1. We're going to press apply we're going to change the outline amount from negative one to one press ok and then for our finishing touches we're going to hit the extrude checkbox and we're going to extrude this up like crazy let's see let's bring it up quite a bit let's say let's do 450 what does that look like does that look like a lightsaber to you that looks like a lightsaber to me press ok and if we zoom into the top here we don't want our lightsaber to have a flat top so what we're going to do is hit the bevel change the outline amount back to negative one press apply and we're going to change the outline amount to negative two press apply again last one we'll just bring the height down to 0.5 press ok that looks good now just a few quick touch ups we want to go to vertex mode drag and select all of the top vertices and we're going to go to our scale tool and scale it down and then we're going to grab the Z just the Z handle by itself and pull up on it to make it a little more rounded now at this point while we're still in vertex mode I'm going to zoom out here down to our bottom I don't really like how short and fat the handle of our lightsaber is so I'm going to drag select the bottom here go to back to our move tool and bring it down what I'm going to do now is click on the vertex button again make sure none of these are selected then I'm gonna go back to the create tab select cylinder again and create ourselves a little cylinder 
Now this guy's just going to be a button. So he doesn't need to have any height segments, any cap segments. And to make him a little smoother, we'll set his sides to 22. Sound like a good number? Now what I'm going to do is select my rotate tool. And if we go over here to angle snap toggle and turn it on, we can rotate it at increments of 5. It'll make it a little easier to hit 90 degrees. We want to turn it directly on its side 90 degrees. Now what we'll do is go back to our move tool, move it up here to the extrusion we made earlier. And we're going to position it right on top of it. Go to our scale tool, scale it down so it fits right in the center and push it back. All right, now it looks a little lopsided. Not to worry, it's an easy fix. We can just go to our rotate tool and turn it probably 10 degrees. And there you go, perfect button. Now right now, the lightsaber and the button are two different objects, which means they won't stick together if we try and move them. That's not a good thing, but we can fix this by selecting the lightsaber, going back to the modify tab, scrolling down to where we find the attach button, press it, and then when we mouse over the button, we'll get a little crosshair. If we click on it, it becomes highlighted like the rest of the lightsaber. Then we can right click to turn off the detach button, and we have one solid piece of lightsaber. Well, that's it for the modeling part of this tutorial. If you head on over to part two, we're going to cover some super easy texturing techniques, how to animate the lightsaber turning on and off, and a quick and easy way to make that famous lightsaber glow. But until then, May the force... never mind. That's not too corny for me. I'm just, I'm just going to... how do you turn this thing off?